in the beginning there was nothing it was dark it was black and then came the light and when the light we saw colors and we loved what we saw we loved it so much that we wanted to use colors to surround ourselves with colors in our lives. And as you know, there are millions of colors that we can make use of. And the more we used colors to cause well-being, happiness, the more we understood the power of colors, not only to beautify, but to make things meaningful and functional. We also understood that with time, we get tired of certain color areas and we want to focus on different color areas and suddenly, Color becomes an enormously important, but scary. But how can we choose the right color? So what happens? When we need to decide colors, and I have been to so many trend seminars during the years, when people present their colors and we need to discuss colors, that people become so frustrated because they cannot discuss what they're seeing. So based on this, what happened on this planet is suddenly, in spite of that we understood that color caused well-being, that we love color, we did this. We used white. In spite of that research shows that we actually feel sick, we cause illness, if we surround ourselves with one color only. Our eyes need contrasts. We need to rest our eyes. Something needs to happen in our surroundings to cause well-being. In spite of that, we do this. Right? Because color is passion. It causes well-being, and to, my, to make the right color decision, whether it's for trends, for interior, for products, it should be always a passionate decision based on our intuition, our love for color, but also a rational decision based on knowledge. And I tell you this story because this is the only reason why this color language was created to be able to describe color, communicate, discuss color, to describe what we see and understand what we see, right? So now with NCS, the natural color system, we can describe the color, we can talk about the small nuance differences because keep in mind that sometimes even the smallest difference in nuance or hue causes a huge impact, whether it is successful or a failure, what you're doing, sometimes, right? And not only that, because color always lives in a context, whether it's trend colors or not, they have to live together with other colors. And now we can describe color similarities, harmonies. We can talk about it, right? Nuance, hue, whiteness. And I tell you this story because when we work with color trends, one of the absolute biggest advantages to develop and pinpoint the exact colors of trends is to be able to understand the full process from the very beginning to the end what we're doing to talk about both the hues, right, and the nuances and how they drift in the color space. This graph I usually show because before introducing you to the color trends, it's important to understand how we work. Research shows that there are two very important things to consider when it comes to color trends. One is the psychology of color. 
what we call the repetitive cycle of color. Very simply, if we are bombarded with a color area for a period of time, our mind gets tired and we want to focus on something different. Other, or usually the other extreme. So the cycle usually looks like this. From the neutrals, we add a little bit more chromatic colors and usually it's red or blue because these are the least scary chromatic colors. But bef before we come to the very chromatic colors, we usually have to go through a violet-purple phase. It's like a cleansing of our minds, of our brains, to prepare ourselves to embrace and welcome the chromatic colors. And one of the very, very important observations that we see in the slow-moving trends today is that for decades now, we have really focused mostly on neutral colors. We have been extremely scared of colors. What we're seeing now is this is changing, slowly. We're beginning to embrace and welcome chromatic colors. So, to simplify things, and it's very, very large simplification, we can say that we are in this process somewhere. Important to keep in mind, when I present you to the color trends, we talk cross-industrial. It doesn't matter if you're a furniture designer, interior designer, you work with automotive or fashion. We, we, work, we, t we talk about from a gen general perspective about these things, right? And it doesn't matter where you live, whether it's Scandinavia, whether it's South America, China, what we identify are the big drivers, the mega drivers that affect us in a similar way, independent of where we are. But they are different, of course, depending on who we are, right? So, besides this, which is the number one, obviously we talk about the very interesting part, the big drivers. What drivers exist on this planet, Earth, that affects us in such a way that it pushes some color areas more than other color areas. And this is one of the most fascinating things to talk about because we talk about market psychology, the world psychology. We take temperature, you know, how much fever does this world have? What moods do we have, right? So when we talk about color trends, to try to address everybody on this planet, we also divide up in four groups that are slightly si different from each other, or slightly, they should be different, because we address different kind of moods, right? One mood is the comforting mood for us who really don't want to stick out too much, but still want to do, say yes to everything that is influences us, right? We have the exploring mood for us who want to stick out, to begin to explore the new things, and we have the one that is more radical, you know, for the trendsetters who really want to show I'm the most trendy person on this planet. And we have this trend that people always need to have, a trend that really is more joyful, more, more happy colors, okay? So these four areas represent, well, each and every trend that we have represent one of each of these areas. My name is Carl Johan Bertilsson. I have the big, big, big honor and privilege to work with color and NCS in more than 25 years. Yes, it's a long time, but I'm never bored. This is one of the most fun things to do, to work with color. One of the best things with this, when you work with the science of color and everything is the moment when you can implement this when you understand how to do this in your design, in your architecture. This is also fascinating because this is learning by doing in real life, right? When we develop trends, we are a group in Sweden. We have Marie here, who is my partner also in crime when it comes to trends. But we gather some of the leading color experts in the world from different industries and for different regions in the world, where each and every one develops their own forecast, their own vision, what they believe 
the colors that would be trendy, right? We have from Italy, Baolab. We have Peggy Van Allen, who is the president of Color Marketing Group. We have Weiwei and Daikon from China. Astrid from BISF, the automotive in Germany, Laura Perryman, UK. We have the French color architects, Nakarat, fantastic organization. And then we compare and we find synergies. And it's one of the most interesting discussions that exists. So now you know the background. Let's talk about what our conclusions are for 2024 plus. Are you ready? Let's do this. Yay! This time we have chosen to kind of introduce this topic as the Anthropocene era color trends. I don't know if you heard about this, but people are beginning now to talk more about the Anthropocene era. You know, we have, you know, that climate change is something that affects us all. Everybody talks about sustainability. In the 1950s, the researchers came with a conclusion that we should really end, and we talk about the geological era of the Holocene era, the natural development of our planet, to a new era, what they call the Anthropocene era, which is the new era when it's not the nature itself anymore causing the change of our Earth. It is the human footprint we are talking about. People have been talking about it since the 1950s when the nuclear bombs were dropped. And they could see that for the first time the Earth had traces from this. Today, they are beginning to conclude this. And the reason we think it's very important is because it's a matter of consciousness. Before, and everybody's talked about sustainability and climate change, but now, today, suddenly, all of us are affected by it. Our rivers dry out, right? We have climate change that affects us basically. We have floods, we have everything. So now in a design world, there are new terminologies, and you know this, biodesign. You even have anthropogenic design. In the color world, a lot of people talk about ethical colors. What kind of color should we use? And what we see is that this is something that is relevant to everybody. Independent of where we are in the world, it's relevant, right? And the Anthropocene era, or the mentioning of this, is the hope that with this consciousness, finally, all of us can do something about it. And in this trend talk, a lot will, hap will, will, ha will be about the problems, the challenges that we have, and the hope that we need to solve the world that we're living in, right? The other huge impact is what you already know, I'm sure, artificial intelligence. They say that in 2024, will be, that will be the real impact. That's when university will go bankrupt. Professions will disappear completely. We already talked about this. If you have followed our trend talks, when we presented the trends 2020, we had one trend because it's when the big boom of smart homes came and everything became smart. We already then talked about the human identity, the synergy of the human intelligence and artificial intelligence. For 2024, this is more relevant than ever and it will impact basically all of our lives. There are reports that say about 12% of the existing professions will disappear. About 13% of professions will be new kind of professions. But the very interesting part is that 75% of the professions that exist today will change. It will change the way we work. How does that influence our work as designers? When we have AI design, where does the human design come in? And we sincerely believe that the, one of the very, very positive things about this is that AI design could all do a lot of mainstream, but the value of human design will increase dramatically when you can say this is designed by a human. 
this is a real design. This is not artificial anymore. This synergy will be extremely important for the future. The other thing that causes this author that is a reflection on the previous point a little bit is that we are facing an enormous gap of generations. We have an older population than ever on our planet and we have the biggest group of youngsters ever. The Gen Alpha and Gen Z is the biggest generation ever that have ever lived on our planet. They were born with smartphones. They were born into AI. Me, one of the dinosaurs, together with the boomers of this planet, we were not born with smartphones. I still hate when somebody says, oh, there's a new app. Marie told me, you have to use Snapchat. I said, I don't want to use Snapchat. No, no, no more apps. We see that this gap of generations is also affecting a lot the way we feel and the choices we make in our lives. The other thing is, of course, that we live in now every day, the global turmoil, where there are a lot of stupid people on this planet that believe that violence can solve things. We have recession, we have issues. People don't feel very well today. Right? It affects us. And usually when we have these kind of, 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 of circumstances, if you look at historical of color trends and color preferences, during turmoils, wars and big things, people are very, very, very careful in the colors they choose. Now, as I told you before, we are already psychologically preparing ourselves to receive more chromatic colors. So we have both things coming out. But one of the things that basically all of these things is affecting is one of these feelings of escapism. All of these things that are happening, that are challenging us as human beings, makes us want to not run away, but to go somewhere else to rest our minds, get some energy, right? To, to focus on something completely different for a while. So escapism is one of the things I will also come back to and address. Let's look at the trends. Trend number one is pushed a lot by the young folks. The young generation, the alphas, the Zs, born with the smartphones. Ethical people, conscious people, wanting to change this planet, but they were born in the metaverse. They were born in a digital world, in a gaming world, where chromatic colors are very important. It's a depressed generation. And the more depressed they are, the more they want to be happy. We have talked about radical happiness. So the more radical they want to become of joy and happiness, the more they want to use these chromatic colors. But they should be ethical. It should be sustainable. And one of the most sustainable ways of consuming is online. The carbon monoxide that you consume online in purchasing your NFTs or your products online is minimum. So, good. But we are now coming to a moment when these guys, and I said these guys because I don't belong to the Zs and the Alphas, these guys are beginning to consume and they want also the physical things. So they want to take the colors in the digital world, translate it into the physical world. And once again, happy colors, joyful colors, and as we're already there, our path is heading in that direction. So the chromatic colors are becoming very important, but they have to be sustainable. This makes something very interesting. I just spent some time in Tucson, Arizona at an ethical color workshop, seeing how we can develop new chromatic colors with the help of bacteria, with the help of food waste, because being that the chromatic colors are pushed more than ever, the focus of producing chromatic colors sustainably is enormous. 
with bacteria, with food waste and everything. I all actually brought, but I forgot it in my briefcase, to show you how bright pink colors you can produce with cabbage. Fascinating. Pushed by happiness, we have talked about this, but the other thing that is important in bridging this to the older generation is that these colors are all have always existed in our folklore. Because folklore is always connected to happiness, to joy, pride of our nationalities. So it doesn't feel that different whether you're a boomer, a Gen Z, or if you are a, um, a Gen Alpha, right? What we see and what can see, and I walked around an exhibition yesterday and I saw some very nice examples here. This generation, or what is happening now in our interiors, in our design, in our trends, is we want to see chromatic colors together. It's kind of a new kind of pop art, what we call a meta art form, popping up. In Milano, the furniture show I was in last year, that was this fantastic place just for marble. And we can see that colored marble in different nuances together are growing enormously in our preferences. And they cannot be that chromatic. So we need also to, to address and welcome the my mindful pastels that calms us down and makes us happy. Either we go all the way to the chromatic colors or we stay halfway with the pastels. And the pastels have been here and they will continue in 2024. So we have trend number one, ladies and gentlemen, just a trend of pure joy, pure happiness. We call it young folk, pushed by the young generation, welcomed by most people. And this is very interesting. You already see the pinks mostly today on smaller gadgets. When I came to the exhibition yesterday, there was a huge stand in Hall C that was pure pink. And the more you look around, the more pink you see on bigger surfaces. Because now we want pink. We want to surround ourselves with pink. We have a green, which is the same hue as the color of the nature. G30Y, but the neon green that makes it, you know, if you take the vegetation and you highlight with all the light in the world, then you get this neon green effect. And another thing that we saw on exhibition yesterday, yellow. Now, usually and traditionally, we human beings prefer reddish yellow colors. What is happening now is that we are addressing one of the most difficult areas ever, the greenish yellow. And this we measured yesterday, several chairs, lamps, greenish yellow, not reddish yellow. So that is a very strong color coming in, being extremely accepted by the market, together with pastels, balanced by a very whitish Y20R color. And as you can see, the forecast tells us, our observation tells us, that it's no longer for accents. We want to have bigger surfaces. We want to see them surrounding us. We want to feel how they affect us, our moods, and make us happy, right? So it can be pink, it can be green, it can be yellow. Now, and just to explain for you guys, now that you know NCS very well, of course. Understanding in this group of colors, we have a very nice hue contrast. They're spread all around the color circle where they have the pinks, the yellow, the green. They're very similar in blackness. So using these colors together is very easy because they have a very nice similarity in blackness. Trend number two is quite the opposite, or it is the opposite. Driven a lot what we have talked about before, that the digital world is taking over more and more. And the more the digital world is taking over, the more we want to stop the digital world and we're going to back to basics, right? We don't want to be in the gaming or the metaverse. We want the nature. This before the pandemic was enormously strong. And during the pandemic, it was came a little bit flurry. 
But after pandemic, it has been a brutal return to natural things. Brutal in the sense that it's not only that we want the colors, we want it to be raw. In the workshop we had in Milano, they said, you know, what the river pour, you use. Don't touch it. Don't add anything. It should look raw. It should look like it's natural, untouched. Because if we do things and we add pigments and stuff, then it's not sustainable more. So it's a quite Taliban trend in a sense that is quite fundamental. And it's one of these things that we see with the gap of generations between the boomers, Gen C and Alpha, driven a lot by the boomers saying, no more, no more digital world, back to the nature, hug the trees, that is the most important thing. But the Z's and the alphas, they want to be there too. But the more digital, the more AI we have, the more important this becomes that we want to become a part of the nature. We want to be one with the nature, right? And we have talked about this before, but it's going back now to real things, the raw reality of animism, right? And I show you, or, or in, in the sense, it's like we want our inspiration from nature above the ground, in the ground, or under the ground. But it should be raw, untouched. Like the grass roots. In this example of Zena Holloway that works with biodesign of grass roots. And I saw a very similar design in, in the greenhouse yesterday, I think from, from the Textile University in Boros, that had a very simil similar feeling of this. I don't know if it was grassroots or not. But this is something in biodesign that is coming out very, very strongly. So we have trend number two, right? That we call raw natural colors with a tint of warmth. Because if there is something we need to have is warmth. But the warmth should be not exaggerated. It should still feel sustainable. It should still feel natural, right? So we have wood kick. And wood keep because we search the nature, we go back to the nature to get energy, to charge our batteries. So we can face the new normal, right, that we have in our planet. The colors is a very dull orange, Y60R, dark color, because one of the very important directions that we see is that colors that are dark and slightly tinted is also a very, very important direction because they're sustainable and they give us a sense still of luxury. Together with the light colors, a yellow or white 20R, very, new, very low chromatic colors, and a B color that is not polluted. And the sense that I say there's a B color, it doesn't have any greenness, it doesn't have any yellowness in the color, sorry, any greenness and a redness in the color, it's just blue which represents pureness. It represents, you know, water, transparency, something that is not touched. So purity is very important in this trend. And we see the surfaces. We want to have dark tinted colors surrounding us because it's correct, it is nice, and it's luxurious, really. And we need the warmth. So we need to feel that even we surround ourselves with sustainable color, we need this warmth, but it cannot be too warm, right? So that is our trend that we call wood kick. And as you can see here, you see that these are very similar. And if you know NCS and the steps there, they're within 10 steps of these colors, which are very hue similar, which makes them very nice to work together. And a big contrast with the blue, of course but the blue has many similarities with the light colors. Nice contrast of nuance, many similarities in hue. Trend number three is a very interesting thing. Like everything, right? In this world that we're living in right now, there's a lot of things happening. Okay? And we really want things to change. We want things to stop. That is one of the core issues with, with the world that we live in. We want to put a stop. Okay? How do we stop things happening? 
Or rather, if I ask you this, what color do you connect with stop? Red, right? What do we, how do you want to stop things on our planet? Do we want it like certain people do to take weapons and kill people? No. What we need right now is love and hope. What color represents love and hope? Red, right? So we need this. At the same time, we need action. We need things to happen. What color represents action? Red, right? So we see, obviously, red coming out. And one of the things with red that is very, very interesting is that basically is one of the only colors that all of us have the same relation to, a very similar relation. It all connects us in the world. Simply by looking at the color of our blood, which is red, so red has always been a very important color for us in the world, all of us, in different ways. I told you before that we are seeing and observing that we are embracing and moving towards more chromatic colors. And if you remember the cycle, that the first step of leaving the neutral colors is that we add a red or a blue. And this is what we're seeing right now. We are leaving the neutrals, and red is one of the easiest colors to adopt, to use. So red is important. Right? Going back to folklore. It's one of the most important colors for everybody on this planet, folklorically speaking. So it's a color that we are seeing more and more being used by the natural designers, in fashion, in design, in product design, but taking the folklore, you know, what, what our roots to show, but many times in different ways, right? But we're talking about what we call a pollination phenomenon. That more and more designers focus a lot, and they have done, we've talked about localism and everything during the pandemic, we focus on our roots, that's what we understand. So we pick up our roots, and we create something new, and we want to, the rest of the world to use it. But there are so many synergies that it usually becomes red, right? But the expressions we see now of color and design has a lot of red, but usually, if you remember the cycle once again, red usually comes hand in hand with another color, which is blue. And the rawness that we talked about in trend two is usually very important in this first step. So we need a neutral. So we see a lot of gray together with red and blue coming out. Okay, so red and blue, and this is, I think I've been to many uh, galleries. I went to Milano and I had a bracelet that was red and blue actually. And it was astonishing to see how many places that had a blue detail and a red detail together, always together. Very important. We want to have this. We want to have red and blue, but we want to, want to add the rawness of gray and rawness. So we create heart stop. The trend of stopping everything bad and embracing everything that is good and beautiful in our lives with the help of red as the core color. And this is very interesting, because usually the choice of reds are yellowish red or, red or bluish red. And it's exactly what I addressed with the blue that is not polluted with any greenness or any redness. This red color is not polluted by any yellow or any blueness, it's pure red. And I went around an exhibition here to several booths and I measured red colors that were pure red already. Interesting. Together with this, and that once again referring to Stockholm Design uh, Furniture Fair, we saw this constellation very much, a pure red with a lower chromatic red. Very important combination, right? And the balance of a Y60R together with a gray, and the gray is a warm gray. It's a Y50R gray. It's not a cold gray, it's a warm gray. 
because we want to have the feeling that we use sand from the desert. It's sustainable, it's nice, it's warm. It's a new way of producing concrete that a lot of architects are talking about right now. Together with blue and this color that could either be wood or a very nice brownish color that we have also seen in this furniture fair. So Joe, walk around. This is fascinating. These colors are coming out. And once again, I want to say this, very important. As we're moving towards a more chromatic direction, red that is usually a small spot color, we want to use more and more on bigger surfaces. Perhaps a sofa, a big area, not only on the, on the spots, right? Many times together with blue, with brown, the lighter um, red, right? This is the way they look in the NCS color space. And you can see they are red. They're all warm colors because even the blue color is slightly reddish. It's one of the most popular colors ever, this R80B color. Very easy color to adopt and to use, right? And as you can see in the new ones, they are quite chromatic colors together with the beige and the warm gray. Then we come to trend number four. And trend number four represents a mindset that we see are growing in importance more and more. The mindset, first of all, of a world that we live in, that we need to look for energy somewhere else, which is not the reality. It should be somewhere else. We see a world that we have worked on for years to kind of erase the traditional gender values or ethnicities. That doesn't matter if you are a woman or a man, if you're black or if you're white or where you're from on this planet. The only thing that matters is that you're human. And the more we erase these boundaries, the more we see a search of then who am I? We also see in a similar, from a color perspective, like I mentioned before, before we can embrace and receive the very high chromatic colors, we have to go through an era where we kind of erase our mindset to be able to receive these chromatic colors. So all of this together of escapism presents us to trend number four. And trend number four is exactly this. Right? And it's not escaping. It's not escapism or escaping. It's a way of running somewhere to sit down and get energy and inspiration from. But usually, these is the colors that we want to surround ourselves with. It's kind of a psychedelic voyage. We even see pharmaceutical companies now investing money in, in, in psychedelic drugs and, and not drugs to give you a kick, to cause well-being because we know we need to enter a psychedelic world if we want to find ourselves and find our happiness. So it's kind of going into a kaleidoscope of search and emotions to prepare ourselves for the next step to find ourselves and understand the world and maybe create a better world. But we need this mindset. In a sense, we can say that we are becoming liquid humans. And the more liquid humans we become, the more we need to find solid ground. Right? In this journey, Purple takes a very important position. Purple, which is one of the most powerful colors that exist, always being connected to wealth, to fortune. Only the rich could afford purple, right? And to reinforce this, we see this, and there was a lot of talk in Milano about this, that gold needs to be here. And the combination of purple and gold, that's an astonishing journey. Right? So we see this coming in big time. Purples, golds, together with a splash of turquoise. 
a Tiffany color. A color that makes things happening, but it belongs to this emotion. Because if you look at this slide, something that is driving this even further, which is not the main thing, but it kind of sets our minds, is what's happening in 2024, that it's be a lot of moon traveling, a lot of Mars traveling. Everybody's talking about this. The plants are already there. And we will not go there. Few people will do that. But one of the most traditional ways of dreaming away is going into space, the universe. And this is the constellation of colors that drives us into this world of escapism or fantasy, right? So we see a lot of dark colors. We see purples. We see gold. And once again, dark tinted colors because we want this escapism. We, the word with, with, as it is today is quite harsh. So what the feeling we want to have is to find luxury, power, wealth. So it should be a very luxurious trend. And we call this stargazer. A very important the purples. R60, R70B in this case, a little bit more bluish than reddish, but still purple colors, very important. Together with gold, Y20R, doesn't have to be gold, but it should be this kind of, of yellowish red color, right? And dark tinted, especially a dark tinted purple, and the automotive is talking about this dark tinted red, has to be there, very important. And then we have the mischievous color, got pops, pops it up and makes it more interesting and completes this psychedelic journey that we need to find ourselves and our happiness, right? So we have this color constellation that it should many times that we see dominated by purple, supported by the other colors, right? And here you have the purples, three of them are hue, very similar in hue. You have the turquoise. So you have the contrast, you have the similarities, and you have the contrast in nuance with two dark, and the other one quite whitish colors, so quite clear colors, but chromatic, which is the general direction, right? So to conclude this, of the 2024 color evolution, and even more clear to illustrate this in this way, where we can see that in 2024, we see much more purples. We see the pure reds. We see a lot of warm colors up there between Y20, Y30, Y10. Green yellows. But maybe even more clear because usually color trends is much more about nuance than it is about hue. And the much more clear direction that we see is if you look at 2022, almost all the chromatic colors were disappearing. Now, for 2024, it's moving in a very clear chromatic direction. And the mid-tones are not that interesting. We want it to be dark tinted, we want it to be chromatic, we want it to be quite light. That's our observations for 2024, and I thank you very much for your time and your attention.